laboratory errors in transfusion practice continue to put patients at risk. This video provides a brief overview of transfusion errors that originate in the laboratory, focusing on critical laboratory stages in the transfusion process, never events, and key recommendations. On average, one third of the total incidents reported to SHOT originate in the laboratory. Laboratory errors have resulted in the wrong component being transfused, components where the specific requirement was not met, handling and storage errors, errors associated with late administration and emission of anti-D immunoglobulin, avoidable and delayed transfusions, and also errors where there was no patient harm such as right blood right patient and near miss incidents. For more information on shot reporting categories, please visit the shop website shotuk.org. Teamwork is essential in transfusion. There are nine interlinked steps in the transfusion process where laboratory and clinical staff work in partnership as one integrated multidisciplinary team. Safe transfusion practice depends on accuracy at every step. These four stages are critical points in the laboratory. Sample receipt and registration where the right investigation is performed for the right patient on the right sample at the right time. Testing. The correct and accurate analysis of samples is required to ensure the safe provision of blood components for transfusion and should be undertaken with full compliance of local and national guidelines for pre-transfusion testing. Component selection. The correct components are selected to comply with the patient's requirements and the clinical request. Component labelling, availability and handling and storage. The right component needs to be labelled with the correct four or five key patient identifiers. First name, last name, date of birth, unique patient identifier and first line of address in Wales of the intended recipient. Components need to be accessible and available for the time required. If this is not attainable, then the clinical area need to be informed. The components need to be handled and stored in the correct way, as defined in the guidelines. All ABO incompatible transfusions are considered as never events by the Department of Health. Never events are defined as inadvertent transfusion of ABO incompatible blood components regardless of the outcome. The overriding concern for the NHS in implementing the never event policy is to report these events when they occur and to learn from the mistakes that were made. The risk of hemolysis and serious harm is more likely with ABO incompatible red cells than with other components. These are the key learning points in the laboratory. Know about component compatibility. Tell the clinical area of any deviation from the patient's known blood group. Group O red cells is the universal donor. However, this is not the case for plasma. In an emergency, or if the group was unclear, the safe group of fresh frozen plasma to give is group AB or group A, but not group O. Maintenance and understanding of patients' historical records and use of national database is vital. Procedural errors. Many incidents reported appeared to result from failure to follow correct procedures, inadequate processes, omitting steps or wrong procedure being performed. Standard operating procedures should be simple, logical, clear, instructional, cover what to do if things go wrong, be available to staff when needed and be followed correctly. Knowledge and skills. Blood Safety and Quality Regulations 2005 legally mandates that laboratory staff must undergo a formal, practical and knowledge-based competency assessment for the procedures they undertake. All staff should receive training in managing distractions and other factors that may affect their overall performance. Transfusion laboratories should be sufficiently resourced to allow for timely training and assessments of staff to further reduce errors. Shared responsibility. Good communication is essential between all staff involved in transfusion practice. 
Shared responsibility is more about being responsible for working according to procedures and training, highlighting errors and deficiencies, resolving discrepancies and not making assumptions. Information technology. Electronic and automated systems should be easy to use and simplify transfusion practice, but adequate training of staff is paramount. IT systems support clinical and laboratory transfusion practice, but do not replace the knowledge of the task. Where manual testing cannot be avoided, all results should be confirmed by automated techniques as soon as possible. Shot data confirm that manual interventions are prone to human error and demonstrate a continuing need for appropriate serological knowledge and understanding by transfusion laboratory staff. Shot has noted in the past that many incidents are compounded by more than one error, where there may have been many opportunities to detect and correct the initial mistake. Effective communication and a solid foundation of transfusion knowledge, including patient-specific requirements, are key requirements for all staff involved in transfusion. Many laboratory errors cannot be detected by clinical staff prior to transfusion. Therefore, laboratory staff need to fulfil their responsibilities carefully when reviewing historical data, testing samples and selecting components, especially where information is not available to clinical staff. Further information can be found at shotuk.org forward slash resources forward slash current resources.